Beyond. 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 Beyond also. Beyond. No, that was it. Be beyond. Be beyond and beyond and be... Beyond. Yeah, that's it. That's the name of the show. This is it. It's Beyond episode 478. Why we keep doing these every week, I don't know. But I'm Max Scoville. That one right there is Brian Altano. <laughs> Two theme songs this week. Yeah, yeah. that's Zach Ryan. Hey, hi. And this is Marty Sleva. Greetings. Uh, we got a good show today. We uh, Zach, you went and played Horizon Zero Dawn. Whoo, played a whole bunch of it. Baby. Uh, we got news on the horizon that there is a, uh, speaking of Horizons, there's an Avengers game from Square Enix in the works and some other rumors. And then we've got release dates for big old PS4 exclusives. And then, of course, uh, Nino Kuni 2. The, the the Nino Kuni kids are back at it again. Back in action is the full title of that game. Nope. Uh, it's <laughs> actually called Nino Kuni Tuni. Nino Tuni. What about Nino Tuni? Yeah. Shh. That's not it. Anyway. Two um, notes. Yeah. No? So, sure. Okay, can we just talk about Horizon Show? Yeah, let's what's, get show? Horizon. Yeah, what's going on with this Horizon. game? I'm super excited for this thing. Uh, well, I played it last week. Played it for a good four ish hours. Ow, uh, yeah. So, it? went down to, yeah, beat the whole game. <laughs> no, uh, I get the feeling that I, I only scratched the surface. Um, that is a huge game. Uh, very, very big and very pretty. Uh, looks really good in 4K. Looks really good in 1080. You said it looks incredibly K's. good in 4K. Um, yeah, it looks amazing in 4K. I mean, that's not to that's not to say that it doesn't look great in 1080. Mm-hmm. Um, but were you, uh, were you primarily playing in 1080? Yeah, we were only allowed to show okay. or capture a bit of 4K gameplay. Uh, the developers walked us through it. It looks absolutely insane. We're um, putting up a. You guys are working on a graphics comparison. We have. It's up now. On oh, cool. IGN.com. Awesome. So check that out when you're done listening to this. Yeah. Um, and uh, so th- I'm going to try to talk about it without being super spoilery. Yes. Um, thank the you. The first por- first part that they let us play was. Uh, basically the opening of the game. And um, so it's a little hard to talk about half of what I played without talking about story stuff. Um, but you do, this is kind of out there uh, already uh, if you've seen previews and stuff, but the game opens, you play as uh, Aloy as a child. Um, her and her caretaker are outcasts from this tribe. And uh, sort of the general setup for the whole rest of the game is that uh Aloy doesn't know who her mother is, and she wants to find out, and the only people that know that is the matriarchs of this tribe, and the only way that she can hold counsel with the matriarchs is to win this competition. So for years, she trains to become, uh, to win a chance to enter this competition and win it to talk to these matriarchs, and there's this whole, like, 80s montage. It's very strange. She wants to be the very best like no one ever was. she really does. Um, And that's sort of the outset of the game, right? So uh, you also find, um, early on, you find this... uh, sort of looks like Google Glass kind of sure. thing yeah. uh, that uh, projects this holographic sphere that allows you to see enemies' weak points and track uh, enemies' paths and stuff so you can set up traps. Um, and that sort of establishes the gameplay loop, which is phenomenal. Um, so before we jump I, into that, like without going into the story stuff, yeah. like, did you like it? Was it good? Was um, it funny? I think it, it has potential to be fine. Mm-hmm. Like I, I wasn't particularly <laughs> okay. I wasn't particularly blown away by the yeah. story stuff. Okay. Um. But I, again, like I only saw the first yeah. Yeah. forty-five minutes. Yeah. You know. So and we know uh, that uh, Ashley Birch is voicing Aloy, yeah, who right. she voiced yeah. Tiny yeah. Tina. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um. The the voice work was great. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. The exposition itself was a little uh, whatever. Uh, Video games. Yeah. Sort of. Um. And then. Uh, but I, I did learn a lot about the game right out of the gate. I, I didn't know uh, how deep the convo trees go, and there's some real cool stuff. Like you know, literally didn't even know they were coming. Yeah, so yeah. You, like there are points in the game where you get to choose your response to different situations. Um, there's uh, they're called flashpoints, and you can confront, you can insight, or you can choose uh, like a love option, and that sort of uh, confront is obviously like anger, like you come off angry. Insight is something a little easier, but might teach somebody a lesson. And then love, like the first instance that I got was these kids are throwing rocks at you, and you have the option to either throw a rock back, nice. call them out on it, or just drop the rock and walk away. And can that you, can you kill them? Yeah, he just murdered those boys. Yeah, just no. so is there like a like a Paragon Renegade system? I've played Mass really Effect sure. for six hours, so I can say that. <laughs> I'm not really sure. It didn't like, seem like what, there was like they were keeping tabs outside of, morality. of outside of letting uh, like outside of player agency, like letting you choose mm-hmm. how you want to present Aloy to that world. I'm not really sure that there's overarching. Like the good adding, yeah, exactly. Adding, yeah, like know. I don't know that it has huge ramifications in the gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did think it was really interesting that they let you do that. Yeah, period. that's cool. Um, overall, I think. Max, you'll dig this. Well, you too, I guess. Uh, it felt a lot like Far Cry to me. Mm, like a lot like really? Far Cry. Yeah. yeah that's, that was going to be my next question is uh, we've seen a lot of that kind of that one big open area and there's yeah. climbing around and jumping on dinosaurs and stuff. But as far as it being 
like an open world space to explore rather mm-hmm. than just kind of like a playing field? Is it exploration heavy? Like, Yeah, so to me, I, I hate this sort of comparison and I feel like it happens a lot, but um, to me it felt like sort of a mix between Far Cry and Rise of the Tomb Raider okay. um, in that you're exploring these big open areas. Like the, the map itself is giant um, and there's objectives, side quests all over the place that you can do. Uh, but you're basically like foraging for stuff all constantly. Like you're picking up uh, sticks, you're picking up rocks, you're picking up pieces from the dinosaurs that you killed. That and, and then you're constantly forging new stuff. Nice. Do, you, um, do you get sort of like encumbered by having too much? Too not caring for not that I know of. Yeah. That's one of my least, least favorite aspects of stuff like Fallout and uh, Skyrim, where like you have. You sort of feel the urge to pick up everything you see. Yeah. It all, it's all going to be useful in some way, usually. And then very quickly, they're like, you have too many forks. Yeah, no, she's very strong. She's a very strong she lady. Carry, carry all so hundreds of forks. When you're like foraging for stuff, is it... Um, is it kind of just like you you need different elements to craft stuff? Or Yeah, okay. so um, each weapon that you get has a different type of uh, ammunition, so you're you're foraging to, to create uh, ammunition for, you know, different kinds of arrows for different types of bows. Okay. So um, Tomb Raider, basically. Yeah, there, but there's also, like, I found a sort of a grenade launcher that looked like a... You remember the wrist rocket... Uh, uh, slingshots yeah, when you were yeah, a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like it was one of those, except it shot these like fireball grenades, or That's you can awesome. shoot, uh, nice. or you can upgrade it to shoot like uh, static electrical grenades that will knock uh, knock out these robot dinosaurs for a little bit, and then you mm-hmm. can attack them that way. Um, so one of my favorite things about uh, the Far Cry games is that they'll show you a map, and they're like, uh, there's like the, you know, like evil leopards are over here. And sure. They go hunt them somewhere. Yeah. Um, and you spend like a half an hour looking for one and then you finally find one. And I think for other people who play video games, they're like, well, they should be there. I should find one immediately. But I actually really like the idea yeah, of just hunting. Sort of like, yeah. yeah. You're just yeah. out there for a while. And then when you find one, it's a lot more special. Do you feel like there's elements of that here? Uh, so on the map, you can see there's different types of uh, these robot dinos. There's like the watchers, which are the little raptor guys that we've seen sort of all over. Mm-hmm. They're, they're using these guys as like their flagship. Yeah. Uh, they're those stupid things. They made a costume of that yes. scared me at PSX. Yeah, yeah. Um, very cool. Like but then there's also so awesome. there's also like uh, sawtooth dinos. There's uh, thunder jaws, and they're just different types. I mean, they don't mean anything, but they're they're just different types of these giant robot dinosaurs. Um, Are there passive or like peaceful robot dinosaurs? Yeah. So there's there's also like races of these sort of deer or antelope looking dinosaurs that won't attack you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's also like cow looking it's ones. It's like those that, direct TV brontosauruses and stuff. Yeah, they won't, they won't <laughs> go up on their sombreros yeah. and hang out. <laughs> they won't attack you unless you provoke them. Um, but they also like, you can sneak up on them and kill them for a bunch of, you know, metal scrap and stuff to create different types of uh, ammunition. So you can't get food from them though. No. So is alloy vegan? She must be. Do you have to eat it all in the game, or is it just well, kind of going around? Getting no, stuff? there's also like you can also see like rabbits and things oh, like that. So oh, okay. they're out there. So and there some of analog, the side there quests, there are like acoustic animals here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some of the side quests are like you know bring so and so this much meat from this much animal, and so you okay, can hunt cool. those okay, animals so as well. Yeah. yeah. But what I was gonna say is, on the map, you can see where different species of these dinos like are suggested to be. And so if you specifically are hunting, like the watchers have a a type of lens in their head that is worth a certain amount of uh, credits or whatever they use for money in this game. Um, So if you're looking for more of those, like you want to follow your map to go, oh, there's a herd of them here probably. That sounds very far cry. Yeah, definitely. It's not like a specific waypoint. It's more like kind of just a general area. Yeah. Yeah. So Um, you're accepting, you have a bunch of quests going on at the same time or you're choosing what's the main quest. I was actually really surprised at the amount of quests that were (coughs) readily available because I played the opening part of the game and then they stopped me down and then they moved me forward. He said probably like three hours-ish and gave me a bunch of skill points to upgrade so you can upgrade. And let's see, I wrote it down here. But you can upgrade it across uh, Prowler, Brave, and Forager upgrade trees. Um, it's kind of like Tomb Raider. Like Prowler is uh, stealth, stealth action, action and survival. yeah, and survival, yeah. Um, so we've been talking a lot about uh, Raz the Tomb Raider. The, the, that's just sort of evocative of that. But um, having watched some of the Let's Play footage that you brought back, or yeah. some of your your capture footage, um, 
I got to thinking that this is actually like probably significantly more complex in the way you can actually approach combat scenarios. Yeah. Like Tomb Raider is, it's, you know, one woman with a rudimentary set of weaponry that she built herself that she can upgrade. But I was seeing you do like some pretty awesome stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So the, the whole gameplay loop, I was talking to the devs about this and they describe it as prepare, engage and retreat, right? So you have to go out and hunt a certain number of dinos to get the resources you need to create the stuff that you need to take on bigger dinos and then you fight those guys and then you retreat and do it all over mm. again. Uh, which sounds like it could get old, but the actual loop itself is super fun. Because is there, the different, was there a lot of emergent stuff, like just kind of things you didn't expect to happen? Well, yeah, absolutely. <coughs> and one of the things that I really loved about it is that you can run across areas where there will be a enemy that's way above your level and all of a sudden you're just running away from this giant stegosaurus that shoots rockets at you, you know? Um, but You do. Yeah, as one is wont to do in that situation. But they were also saying that if you've properly equipped yourself, even if you're way under leveled, you can take those guys on. And I think that's sort of what you were talking to. Yeah. Like, I I purchased a sort of a like a harpoon gun. Yep. And then I had this grenade launcher, and then I had uh, my regular standard bow and arrow, and then I had electrical bow and arrow. And so I didn't win because I'm terrible at video games. I didn't beat this guy, this uh, Stegosaurus boss, but uh, I was able to like track him down, and then shoot him with the harpoon gun and stake like stake the ropes into the ground so that it tied him down so that he couldn't chase me. And then I'm like lobbing fireball grenades at him. And, and I saw then, you, you were circling him and you hit him with like three of these things at the same time. Yeah. So he had like three separate pivots holding, it was like a building a tent out of a stegosaurus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you just like stake him down and then you're like, I was lobbing grenades from long distance and then I, you have a staff and you can, uh, if you can sneak up behind enemies, you can do stealth attacks that are worth more damage. And right. so, I mean, it's, it was just really, that whole loop is super fun. And I think it's going to be something that like will carry you through a lot of that. So we've seen a lot of really huge enemies in this. And obviously there is the the kind of action RPG mechanics here. But yeah. uh, was there a sense that like, uh, is it a sense of like just dealing damage? Like are there, they're not numbers flying off these guys. Are yeah, there are. Are there really? Yeah, okay. yeah. You can see how much damage you're doing. Yeah. Okay. So, so feel like but the HUD is totally, the but the, the HUD is totally customizable. So that might be stuff that we okay. don't necessarily need to see. Yeah. Cause I feel like yeah. I haven't, like I'm always, I'm always kind of a just wary of stuff when they show off this, like a beautiful game and then yeah. there's, there's no HUD and then you see the final game and there's just like, just crap all over. Right. So one of the things that sort of bugged me and looking back through the footage I noticed too, is that there's everywhere you look on like in the screen itself there's these little sticks popping up that says there's something to collect here like come grab this right. and like i'd love to be able to turn that stuff off and just wander up to something and say oh i can harvest these sticks or i yeah. can grab right. this rock rather than like looking out ahead and seeing seven or eight yeah. flag poles that say like pick all this stuff up. i'm totally with you on that like i actually i mean i like the aesthetic of this game in terms of like mixing the sort of you know the acoustic and the and and the technological as as you guys said but um uh, one of the things I really love about a game like Shadow of Mordor or Far Cry mm -hmm. is that like there's a slight glow to a plant that you might need yeah. or like something, some yeah. foliage off yeah. in the distance, yeah. Yeah, but it isn't just like tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a subtlety in like how to, how to uh, guide the player's eye in a yeah. giant open world. So yeah. we've seen a lot of uh, the really, really big enemies. And I was going to ask, like, is there any kind of like Shadow of the Colossus type stuff? I know there's like there's bits well, where you're, you're tying stuff down. Yeah. That sounds more like... Uh, more of like a real time combat thing than like stat based. Yeah, I'm not necessarily sure. Well, I can't really speak to this like the stat based stuff. Uh, how do you climb? The, how do you climb up on those brontosauruses? With well, the that's what I was going to say. Yeah. In terms of like a Shadow of the Colossus thing, that's your best bet there. Um, I came across one during my time with the game, and basically he was on a route outside of these ruins, and so. I snuck into the ruins. I took out the watchers that were on the inside. And then you're kind of cr crawling up these crumbling staircases until you get to the top level of the ruins. And if you activate your, there's got to be a better name for it, but I was just calling it Google Glass. <laughs> um, you can see. Better revision or whatever. Yeah, right. You can see his his path. And so once you know when he's going to come around that side of the building, you can position yourself to jump onto basically the spines that he has sticking out. And we've seen that in, yeah, I think, yeah. like the original reveal. Yeah, right, right. Where you're jumping back and forth to get up to the top. And then once you get up to the top, you uh, override the tall, the tall necks. And that sort of reveals... The map is covered in fog, and once you get to the top of the tall boy, it 
opens or <laughs> tall, tall neck. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I haven't drank in a month. <laughs> um, get on the top of that big, you gotta get on that big old tall boy. Uh, tall boy. <laughs> but it reveals the stuff on your map. Oh, for so you. that's like, like the and that's far cry. And that's right. how you'll see yeah. the herds of animals. That's how you'll see that's settlements really awesome. and things like that. I really yeah. like. So it's got that sort it's of kind like, of like an Assassin's Creed. Yeah, like yeah. a Ubisoft yeah. tower thing. Yeah, except the towers walk blue. You can tell it's ice cold. Yeah, that's right. Delicious. God, I'm super stoked for this. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty much on media blackout at this point i'm like i'm excited to just jump into it like um did you find yourself getting like were you curious about the world or did it feel like you're getting beat over the head with exposition with the early stuff i mean not necessarily beat over the head because that's what the beginning of any game is yeah, you know yeah. it's like here's a story here's a story here's a story um i really appreciated that they jumped us forward and let us uh basically they were like well you can do anything you want now yeah. um and all these side quests open up and all the, these like main quest things opened up uh, I didn't do any of that. I basically just ran around and hunted for stuff and cool. just try to climb as much and see as much of the world as I could. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then I went back and played through a couple of the like side questy kind of things. Yeah. So. I think one of the cool things that sort of uh, y like unifies this game is that there are, and you haven't seen a ton of them, but here and there, like they've, they've given us a peek, but the the towns, the other travelers, the, the sort of NPCs that you can come back and sell stuff to. Yeah. I think that's a little different than say, again, I mean, we've, we've evoked Tomb Raider many times, but you don't really have that in Tomb Raider. Right. Uh, you are a lone, you're a loner. Mm -hmm. And in this game, I like the idea of like going back, it's sort of Zelda-esque and being like, yeah. oh, there's, there's people here you can interact with. Yeah. yeah, and you can see when you get items from uh, your dino enemies, you can see things are marked like blue or green and that will let you know that these are worth more to uh, retailers. Okay. Or to, you know, uh, shaman that are trying to sell you stuff. And so you can take them back to the village, but there's always that, that thing in the back of your head when you're selling off a bunch of your inventory, like, well, will I need this later to yeah. upgrade something? Should I hold on to it now or should I sell it for 400 metal scrap to just have that cash to buy a set of arrows that I don't have yeah. to forge, you know? Um, yeah, I, I was super impressed. Like, I came away from it really, really looking forward. To, I mean, I've been looking forward to it for a while, yeah. but this really cemented yeah. it. Like, it's it's crazy that we're, awesome. we're four weeks away. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't no. sound like it doesn't sound like it's reinventing the wheel or anything. It doesn't sound like crazy groundbreaking, but it sounds solid. So that's it's, yeah. It's sort of an amalgam of the best parts of a lot of things. Like okay. so cool. that that was enough in well, itself. It's, it's also yeah. something that Sony doesn't really have in its stable. Yeah. yeah. And I also I think this game's gonna sell incredibly. Oh, like, yeah. I think this is the first in a long line of of, of franchise. I think this is going to be up there with like Uncharted and Bloodborne as I some agree. Of the best yeah. Selling, yeah. Uh, cool. high selling. I, I think this will be one of those things that by fall we'll see it as a bundled pack in title with, with PS4 yeah. or PS4 Pro, Pro, which would be brilliant. The, yeah. Put man. that thing out for three ninety nine with Horizon built if, in this fall and you will clean up. I don't care what Scorpio has to offer. If there is ever such a thing as a killer app with so the PS4 Pro, <laughs> it's it's this. Yeah, like, totally. Holy totally. moly. And I think it's also like what, you, I'm, what you're doing for us right now is you're sort of like, you know, quelling the fears and I think a lot of our audience of like not fears, but I think there was a lot of skepticism about this game. Like there's well, we a lot had, of like we'd this seen developers never really done anything over the like, over the course of a year and a half. We'd sort of seen the same ish thing over and over, yeah. and then hadn't really gotten extensive hands on time. Mm -hmm. And so this was the first sort of. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is like it's never a great sign when there's not hands on events readily available in the months leading up to a game. And right. Like, you had played it at E3. Yeah. I, same. I had area. heard that people were playing at PSX, but I didn't get a chance to run over and play it. Um, and, but this was like the, a month out from release. This is like the only real big preview event. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's uh, a lot of games that do, especially a big open world game that come together in the 25th hour. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know. And I get this, I get the feeling that that's probably the case here, Yeah, but cool. yeah, I'm stoked. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. well, like, yeah, Gorilla, they, they make, they make solid games. They don't always hook people, but like, you know, they, yeah. they don't make like, and I'm excited, stuff, like, you know? I'm excited for this to be a, a huge hit for them, too. Yeah. You know do you, what I mean? Do you because feel like I, this will be a big franchise for them in terms of, like, I mean, we're talking about this game right now, but I, games aren't made in a vacuum anymore. Like, I yeah. feel like this, this if it does well, like you guys are suggesting, which I absolutely believe it will, um, probably a couple million, um, I think this could go on to be sort of like their Zelda, their Assassin's Creed. Well, their, I'm sort of, yeah, I'm sort of thinking of it in a way... Uh, like Watch Dogs, like yeah. it's sort of analogous to Watch Dogs. I mean, like the first one, this one I think will be great, but I think Horizon 2 will be like a 10 out of 10 yeah, Uncharted 2 sure. kind of Games feel, you know? Like, that's how that, that's how yeah. that goes. Well, and yeah, like, sure. it's exciting to think that by the time Horizon 2 comes out, the engine will have been improved by Kojima. Yeah. yeah. Like they're going to be sharing that tech. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. It'll have like way more oil everywhere and naked babies and mm -hmm. whales and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited um, for this. No, just, just the comparison to, to Rise of the Tomb Raider, but with dinosaurs and, you know, satellite dishes, that's, yeah. that's good news. So... On the subject of Tomb Raider, uh, we got news. Um, we got news that Square Enix is working on an Avengers game, uh, and it's going to be 
uh, Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal are attached to Marvel projects. And yeah. Taku is reporting that Crystal's on Avengers. Meanwhile, Eidos is on Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, and then exciting. you stack cool. that on top of Insomniac doing Spider Man, uh, Telltale doing Guardians also, and uh, Marvel versus Capcom having everybody punch each other uh, along plus, with Ryu. Plus the Lego games. Plus, yeah. yeah. Um, that's that's good news. Yeah. yeah. That's, like, a, that's a huge step up from like. You know, no offense, but like High Moon Studios and Activision. And, oh no, totally. You know, yeah, and, uh, and it's we've been talking so about it for a while. Like, like Disney has been so smart with uh, keeping Marvel as a brand yeah. in super high quality, right? And not doing the DC thing of like tarnishing it with with like BVS and Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Um, well, but we hadn't seen games like they've been doing it in terms of movies. Like, I, the, yeah. right? Like the Marvel Studios movies have been good, but it was just yeah, like but they've been completely la- lacking in in the video. Games. Like where yeah, the hell are these games? Whereas yeah. it's the other way around with, with yeah, you know, WB. Well, yeah, I think, ironically, I think that, yeah, that I, they're applying their learnings from the film world here because, like, when Marvel bought Star Wars and Marvel bought, uh, uh, I Disney, mean, Disney bought yeah. Star Wars and Disney bought Marvel, everybody sort of panicked. But they chose the right people to helm the right roles, and then we were kind of like laissez faire about it. Yeah. They're like, "Well, you guys know the source material. We just own the property, so you do what you yeah. need to do with this property." So I, I love the idea of them. Looking at like watching reviews, seeing companies that they like, and saying, "Well, these guys would do an excellent yeah. Marvel when they, game. Let's turn it when over." When they opened their games division back at E3, and it was like the first project is Insomniac Spider Man. We're like, "Oh, that's perfect." Yeah, and then they're like chilling out, and they're like, "Okay, so the studio that brought you Tomb Raider is going to bring you, you know, uh, the Avengers. Yep. The studio that brought you Deus Ex is going to, and Hitman is going to give you Guardians right. of the Galaxy." Yeah, and I feel like with with all of this, and obviously fingers crossed, but I feel like we're like sl- kind of like slowly careening into another golden age of like of 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 comics as video games. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot when I was a kid in the like the Nintendo era, Super Nintendo era, Genesis era. There was a ton of comic book games. Mm-hmm. Not many of them were great, but they were side scrolling beat 'em ups. They were platformers. They were interesting at least. Like we had, a, I, I mean, I had a Silver Surfer game on NES. Yeah. Like why hasn't that really happened? Maximum since? Carnage. Actually, on Super yeah, Nintendo. Maximum Carnage, yeah. which is awesome. I was reading an old uh, old X Men comic the other day, and they had an really ad for, you? Yeah, I know weird <laughs> weird brain problems, but it was, it was something from like you know old X Factor or something, and they had yep. an ad for uh, a giveaway they were doing for that Silver Surfer game, that insanely, yeah. stupidly hard one. Oh, yeah. yep. And the grand prize was a freaking Silver Surfer jet ski. Yeah. Really? <laughs> they like airbrush awesome. Silver Surfer. And it wasn't like what it wasn't like a sea do, which are like safer. It's like a stand up and kill yourself right. jet ski. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, who has that? Dude, yeah. uh, like total tangent, that game is not good and it's very difficult. It's hard as hell. But the soundtrack is phenomenal. For the it's, NES? Yeah, it's like crazy space, like heavy metal butt okay. rock yeah. made yeah. of chip tunes. Like, yeah. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, like, but I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm super stoked for this and sort of just like my mind keeps wandering. Well, first off, I don't think we're going to get these for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, but my mind keeps wandering to like, what other studios can they partner up with? And yeah. like, the idea, I know you guys aren't big Gears of War fans, but imagine like a Gears, like Coalition making an X Force game. Like, totally. Like, place Marcus Phoenix with Cable. I mean, yeah. they, they all you the same have, body a, types. That's a palette swap, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like, yeah, you mentioned Silver Surfer. I'm like, what if there's just a passive, like, that game company, Silver Surfer game, where you're just doing little, little surfies down the yeah. I don't think you understand what Silver Surfer's job is. I really don't. Is it like the Herald of Galactus? Yeah, that'd be like yeah. if Journey showed up on the top of that mountain and was like, His name yeah, isn't Journey. <laughs> yeah, Journey shows <laughs> up with a scarf. His Journey. Yeah. Silver Scarfer. Huh? Yeah. Wally yeah. Wanderman. Yeah. Wally Wanderman. Uh, what was that PSVR game, not Bound, the other one, Thumper? Oh yeah, I want that, uh, but as Silver Surfer. God. Yeah, with this Joe, Joe Satriani yeah. Yeah. blowing your ear holes. Yeah. yeah, Joe Satriani blowing in your ear holes. All VR Silver Surfers, but just. I mean, the idea of pushing above a Marvel Comics thing, like a AAA level one in VR, is like I just get excited thinking about oh, that. God, you know, yeah. I mean, just a AAA Marvel Comics game. Period. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's, yeah. Well, I mean, we've had we've had like they've had some. Some swings and misses, you know. Yeah, yeah. there've been some. Deadpool was interesting. It wasn't bad. It, was so it wasn't there. good. Uh, yeah. One um, of the things that that uh, we did here at IGN when we heard that this was going to happen was we resurfaced this video that we made about a year ago that was uh, the best Marvel GTA mods. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And I wasn't super con- like. I wasn't quite there on the idea of a Marvel game. You know, I was like, yeah. I'm not necessarily sure that I need to play that. And then I'm watching these, like the Hulk mod in GTA or the yeah. Iron Man mod. Yeah. And I was like, 
That is awesome. Yeah, I yeah. want to do that so bad. That yeah. looks well, awesome. There were like there were some surprisingly good Hulk games. Yeah, that Hulk yeah. Ultimate, Ultimate game was really yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. destruction. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was where awesome. you could make a like a glove out of a car, yeah. Yeah. punch yeah. another car yeah. in the car. I, I really the, think yeah. like comic <laughs> books. Comic books lend themselves to video games some in many ways better than they do film or TV. I mean, honestly, uh, yeah. In a in a lot of yeah. ways, obviously, yeah. there's tons of great comic book movies, all, like lot, lots of really cool comic book TV shows. But in terms of like video games, you can sort of strip away. I don't know a lot of like the logic. And mm -hmm. seriousness that you kind of have to pad out a movie mm -hmm. with. You have to sort of ground this in some way. And with a video game, you're just like, I don't know, who cares? Like, yeah. Let Wolverine tear up a car because it's fun. Yeah. 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 Oh, my car. Um. Uh, the one thing from this also is that, uh, according to Jason Schreier's report on Kotaku, is that uh, IDAS is putting Deus Ex on hold. That well, doesn't surprise me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the second one didn't really sell. Super well, yeah. Uh, you know, like that's we loved it here in the office, but it was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's I mean, such a the, bummer though, like because that was like this beloved, like beloved, you know, IP, and they basically rebooted it, and everyone was like kind of wary about it. And then mm -hmm. you know, uh, was it Human Revolution? Uh, yeah, that was, yeah. The, yeah. That was yeah. the first one. Yeah, of mankind. And then it was like that was received really well, and it yeah. was gorgeous. It took forever for it to come out. Like it yeah. was, you know, I mean, teased for ages. Mankind well, Divided was received really well, and no one talked about it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, no I, one feel, played I mean, everyone was it. mad yeah. because it was like what the bosses were like weirdly balanced or that something. That was the first. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, like, oh, seems yeah, like they fixed yeah. that in um, the one from last there, year. But like, none there of are some games. There are some games that we talk about here in the office for a really long time, and then they come out, and everybody talks about it for a week, and is really stoked on it, and then they just totally drop off the radar. And that's bizarre because like the future is in there I feel like almost dated itself like when yeah. when the first one came out it was like we were uh, I don't know I mean the future is always kind of happening but yeah. there was stuff that went from being like completely you know high high concept sci-fi stuff like I don't know drones or augmented reality or whatever yeah. to like oh there's actually like you know dudes on reddit with 3d printed prosthetic cybernetic arms and stuff mm -hmm, sure and the weirdest thing was the development at time it took for for mankind divided uh I think more time passed in the development than did in the universe. I, I might have that backwards, yeah. oh, but, but it was like, we talked about this on, on Up at Noon, but it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it just struck me as kind of like, like they weren't doing like a massive leap forward. Like for instance, like um, with Cyberpunk uh, 2077, which is probably going to come out in 2077, 2077 yeah. that's, that is a modernization of Cyberpunk uh, 2025, right? Yeah. Because 2025 is like, it's right around the corner. It's next year. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah. Oh, you're it, bad at math. Yeah. yeah. No, it veers. <laughs> well, yeah, look at my job. It, it veers into <laughs> not making games. It veers into paleofuturism, basically, yeah. which is like predicting a version of the future and then the actual current events eclipse that version. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, the Jetsons this year had a car and a suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, it, like, I said a lot of like very sort of like he heady terms, and then it boils down to just like George Jetson driving yeah. to work in his suitcase. suitcase. No, do you remember and that? Like, that doesn't make sense. Do you remember that Lego line in the space one that was just Ice Planet 2002? Yep. And I was like, what? Like, those came out in like 1996, and they were like, yeah, we're going to colonize an ice planet and have laser yeah. chainsaws. And you're like, what yeah. the? 2002 was very boring when you think about the, it. The Deus Ex <laughs> thing is weird because I think it sort of joins uh, the original Tomb Raider with a game that sold well was received incredibly well but then we get this like re press release afterwards or a quote where they're just like this underperformed and you're like what you sold millions but it's like no but we needed to sell like seven yeah. Yeah. yeah like i was reading about the investors in japan for capcom and how they're disappointed with the sales of resident evil 7 compared to 6 even though i guarantee that 7 was cheaper to make than 6 i guarantee oh yeah because yeah. i mean you're not you're not mo-capping well, and 7 know, is critically stars. acclaimed and, yeah yeah, yeah mm -hmm. exactly um but like if when you compare the sales numbers of the two, one is doing better than the other, and the bottom line is really all that matters because video games are a business. And sometimes it's kind of disheartening because yeah. like you have to lose, you know, like we're getting some cool Marvel games and you lose something like this. So I yeah. hope that like they find a place for the Deus Ex franchise because it's really cool and it's, it's unlike anything else in games. Yeah. I mean, I hope that for you know you're just you're just gonna be playing as like. Rocket Raccoon instead of Adam Jensen is another yeah. Yeah, yeah, he never totally. asked for yeah. it. You know, they yeah. did a bunch of science experiments on him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the idea of playing a a game like Hitman with the Guardians of the Galaxy where you can swap on the fly, like you can swap characters on the fly yeah. and yeah. have all these alternate different routes leading to the same objective just gets oh, me feeling all sexual. Cool yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm, very, I'm very <laughs> curious if either of these games will be multiplayer. Just because obviously they're two such Dude. giant teams. I didn't even yeah, think about being yeah. Multiplayer. Huh. yeah. And then the other the other game that immediately came to mind would be if a uh, Square Enix Montreal, who's responsible for the Go games, would make some sort of like Avengers Go or yeah. some we actually Marvel something Go. That's yeah. so cool you said that because we said that on Up at Noon as well. I actually like <laughs> like adore those games. Yeah, so do I. And I feel like they're they're kind of slept on on consoles. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people on iPhone played them because they they lend themselves well to touchscreen. Mm -hmm. But they're all on PS4. 
Uh, and not Deus Ex. Not Deus Ex. Yeah, the first oh, really? Is that yeah, yeah. Hitman and Tomb Raider. Deus That's, Ex isn't yet, I don't think. It will be yeah. eventually. It'll, it will be. Yeah. But yeah, um, go check those out if you can. They're regularly in like those PSN flash yeah. sales for there's, like there's a fuck games I keep on, I will keep on my phone forever because yeah. I'll just play those games on a phone. Yep, yep. If, if you could play as any Marvel hero in a game, what would it be? Ooh, uh, I mean, I really love Gambit. Max and I always talk about how how stupid a lot of the X Men are, even though we secretly love them. Yeah. Um, but Gambit's one of those guys that like he's not a, he's not a, like he, he's him be, having his own movies kind of silly, but him in the video game makes perfect sense because you're just like interacting with stuff around you. You're super charging it, distance yeah. and melee. That's, yeah. See, that's totally. the, that's the thing that I think works so well for superheroes is that if they have a power that translates to something you want to do in a video game, it totally works. Like or, making yeah. a, a Professor X game wouldn't ever make sense because how would you? I mean, you, it would be like "Remember Me" or something. Sure, I want a going inside. I want a sets. rogue dating yeah. simulator where she oh, kisses people and kills them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, like yeah. Hulk works because Hulk is just a really strong man. Yeah, he's a, yeah. he's a brawler yeah. waiting yeah. to happen. Yeah, he's yeah. just a brawler. I want yeah. I want Jessica Jones' uh, noir game that where half of, of it takes place in a bar. Of course you okay. do. Uh -huh. All the sex. Oh, yeah. superpower! Ooh, drinking and banging. banging. Try to um, I really. I this. It sounds like a stupid joke, but I want a Daredevil game. Yeah. Like, they were they were working on it for a while. It was going to have, I think, sort of a precursor to like what detective mode was. Yeah, uh -huh. like that was back in God. I want to say that was like PS2 era. Yeah, uh, and I think it was sort of sort of tied into the, the yeah. movie. But it was at that point when like licensed games were in a really bad spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and superhero movies were not like a proven thing yet. Yeah. I would. I well, would it was also really developed by Evanescence. So here's what I want for. <laughs> <laughs> here's such a bad. Movie. Here's what I want for a Daredevil game. I want it uh, once again to be entirely VR. I yeah. want it to be very, very sound based. Also, yeah. you're blind. Yeah, well, that's I mean, what I'm no, saying. Honestly, yeah. like, um, see what he sees. Like, I want it to be so. Every now and then, you get the sort of like you get like pings sonar. where you get like this sonar yeah. map of the environment around you, and make it like two hours long. Yeah. Make it like uh, yeah. like the Batman Perfect. game. Have you checked out that, that game, Persuasion? Awesome. No. no. Persuasion? No. It's an IGN first. We had Possession. Oh, you told me about this. One. Yeah, it's the one. It's uh, Bill Gardner who worked on. Uh, Bioshock, and it's a it's a first person horror game, but you're you play as a oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I don't think it's uh, friend it's not, friend yeah. of the show, Anthony Gallegos, used to put me onto this iPhone game. I've totally friend of many of shows, yeah, many shows. Uh, it's an iPhone game that has no has no graphics. Yeah. Really? Santa Sangre, yes, that yeah. one, yeah. and it's all sound based. And you put your headphones in, and you walk in different directions, yeah. and you can hear enemies coming closer. Oh, that's that's really cool. Yeah, the game starts like, with you being buried alive. I mean, and yeah, you wake up in the afterlife. I love the idea of like a Daredevil game that is a cross between like super hot and the Li the listening mode in Last of Us. Yeah. Or oh, you're like, dude, that, yeah, sounds awesome. yeah. Um, that sounds awesome. Yeah, that'd be cool. Daredevil would be great for that. Because, yeah. I mean, again, that's that becomes a limitation, but also a mechanic. Yep. Uh, oh, man. I don't know. I'd love to see, like, it'd be, it'd be really cool to see just like a 80s, just like classics, you know, Silver Age heroes as like a the hero shooter or yeah. something. I mean, mm -hmm. we kind of have like, we have like, you know, Marvel heroes online. And, you know, I feel like the term like hero shooter or hero, you know, like just anything hero based, like a MOBA. Uh, it really lends itself to superheroes because they're always fighting each other for no reason. Yeah, I you think know? it makes perfect yeah. sense. You for really, like, yeah, you really don't need. Um, a but that's catalyst. that is the issue with having multiple heroes in one, like with with teams, like mm -hmm. super, which is what more of uh, more of Marvel is is, is team based. Mm -hmm. Right. But you have to balance all those characters. So, yep. I mean, the idea of doing like Guardians of the Galaxy and having you like, oh, I'm going to switch between characters, but like, what if Groot, Groot is just super overpowered? And I mean, but, if you I mean, the thing is, like, yeah. like Marty said, like if you could play multiplayer. Yeah. as the Guardians of the Galaxy and right. oh, tackle yeah. objectives together, like that would be amazing. Yeah. Well, look just... at the way Battlefront handles it. Like it's basically yeah. just a toy box mode for where it takes yeah. all your favorite Star Wars heroes and villains and pits them against each other. I mean, you can have like Chewbacca fight Krennic, and you're like, yeah. oh, cool. Like they could totally do that with Marvel. I mean, I love how totally we have that. Win. We have that totally like, we're like this isn't canon. This doesn't make sense. But then you go back and read old comics, and it's like, oh no, Colossus got hypnotized, and he thinks he's a Soviet like, <laughs> proletariat worker or something. You're like, what are you doing? <laughs> Classic Colossus. Yeah. Aunt May drank a cup of venom. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, there's a, there's a comic like, where Ant-Man yeah. becomes the golden oldie. Yeah. Yeah. She becomes like a silver surfer and she That's has insane. to go and make Galactus go away. Yep. With Franklin Richards by her side. I'm so glad we don't there collect those toys on the level we collect Star Wars toys. Oh, we it's only have, a matter of time. I know. It's I going know. it's going down a downhill real fast. Um, yeah. So on the subject of uh, weird ass VR games, um, we got some release dates for big PS4 exclusives. Yep. First of which is Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Marty, you played this at PSX? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it comes out uh, February 27th, yep. which is weird. That's a Monday, so I guess the day before Horizon. I don't know why yeah. that's happening. Uh, but yeah, it's Psychonauts 1.5. It's the stopgap between the end of the first game and the start of big traditional Psychonauts 2. It is a VR point-and-click adventure game. Yeah. So cool. Super funny, written by the original team. Yeah. Uh, art style's awesome. Art style's awesome. 
it's it's node based like uh, like Batman. Yeah. If, you, if you play that, like the detective stuff in Batman, which totally makes sense because canonically you're just Raz being clairvoyant, and so you're putting your mind in different yeah. objects or different people, Neat. and so you see what they see. Um, yeah, I'm super stoked for this. I think this is gonna be a couple hour long, mm-hmm. like really funny, well written puzzle game. Uh, yeah, I think I think point and click is so perfect for VR. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just because it's you're not moving around a whole lot. Right. It's all about looking at things. Mm-hmm. That being said, uh, Resident Evil Seven. Uh, gets away with get, gets away from that entirely. Like yep. it is com- completely 3D VR, and it works. Like it's it actually spooky. works. It's spooky as hell, but in terms of actual just basic basic movement, without it being sort of like point and click, completely works. So I think yeah, see, I feel hey. like I, I feel like it's 50 50. I've heard people say exactly what you're saying that it works so well, and then I've heard other people just say that you got to go into the settings. They just did a lot of people. You got to go into the settings. You got to take off the camera wobble and the FOV stuff, and it's so much. And different. then significantly fewer pukes. Yeah. Way well, uh, pukes. how about how do you make it less Maybe scary, bars. huh? You just don't do put that hat on there. Just stay. Go yeah. look at. Just find a cool place in the I'll game. I'll never play. It. No, I think I'm going hat. to go on the the Hulu VR app and watch that one about penguins because they're not scary one bit. If you get too scared, that. look in a mirror and say to yourself, uh, "It's not real." Do you guys you can't see look the, at a mirror in VR? Do you guys ha. see the stats? Black that, mirror. Do you guys see the stats that 10 percent of people who connected to uh, yeah, our net? I don't um, believe that at all. I mean, I understand those are stats. I totally don't believe that. Are, are playing in VR? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but of those 10 percent, 100 percent are doing pukes. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that's so. right. Um, think that's what right do you guys right. think? Do you think that's like a low number? Because this is the flagship PSVR game. No, right I think now. that's. I think. I think it's way too high of a number. Really? If the game sold, yeah, I don't know if the game sold. Well, a couple, I'll put it this way: like, a couple million. I'm. I'm right at the very tail end of the game, and I just tried the VR stuff for the first time. Just if you tried it, like technically, I tried it in VR. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've done the I don't have a VR. Oh, well, they too. make it so easy. I mean, it's yeah. so seamless. But I also haven't them, signed up through Renet because stuff like that. Like I and I don't like. Oh, if you do it now, they'll send you green herbs in the mail. Is that true? Yeah. You can't sleep. Yeah, but you gotta talk on. to your doctor about it first. Yeah, you gotta get a card. I have trouble I have trouble sleeping in there. <laughs> I got uh, knee problems. Uh the uh, nice. the second game. We were talking about Rhombus of Ruin. Sure, no, yeah, we're talking fine. about Final Fantasy twelve now. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh Final Fantasy twelve the Zodiac Age got a release date uh July eleventh. Ah. The, which is a little bit later than ta- we thought. Are you over there talking about the best Final Fantasy? We are. Game? Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the best really? Final Fantasy. Oh, that's, both, that's both Zach and I's favorite. Wait, are you talking about Crystal Chronicles is coming to PS4? <laughs> Come get a bucket with your friends. Four Vitas at once? <laughs> I'm in. Charge up those PSP goes. We're getting in there, baby. I don't want to be the bucket boy. Uh, I'm so excited for the Zodiac Age. Oh um, I haven't played through Final Fantasy 12 since probably 2009, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, so it's when, such a great... Huh? What? So Quoi? I I have like a, wet I what what I have like a mental image for every I think every Final Fantasy game except mm. for twelve. Uh, twelve is uh, a man in a half vest. What are you doing with your hands? That's that's where his vest ends. As you're making boobs. What year did that come out? Uh, 2006. Quit it. 2006. 2006. So that was what like a PS2 game? Or? Yeah. Yes, that it was, was a like the last. So game. I when I bought my PlayStation three. The only game that I played on it for like the first three months that I had it was Final Fantasy XII because okay. I was halfway through. It's sort of, it yeah. looks like uh, it's the same director as Vagrant Story, so it kind of looks yeah. like that. It's it's, it's like, all set in Ivalice. It's that same world. Um, yeah. It's kind of yeah. Star Warsy. Yeah, it is. What? It's like, really Star like Warsy. Hidden, hidden fortress, sort of. Yeah. That okay. It's actually. It, I mean, it's got a lot of criticism narratively because it's so close to Star Wars, but I think that only works yeah. towards its. Benefit. There's a there's a man named Chewbacca in it. What? No, there's not. No, there's not. No, there's not. <laughs> but there is like a. A Big's devilish wish. rogue who's got like a funny animal sidekick. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a story about a, a, a prince. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah I a mean, princess, a kingdom, yeah. boy, a girl, yeah, yeah. a um, galaxy. Yeah, and then that, that sort of fell on uh, all week rigging announcements for uh, it's Final Fantasy's 30th anniversary. And so every day in Tokyo, they're announcing something new. Um, they showed concept, or not concept art, but like the key art now for Final Fantasy VII Remake. I think it's great that you call it key art instead of just key a art? picture. What is it? It's just a picture. They showed oh, they a showed a picture? They showed a picture. What's key art? Key art? Key art? Key art? Key art? Um, uh, and also, I don't know if that game's ever coming out. Do you think we're going to get a trailer I, a trailer or anything for it this week? I bet you- I mean, we're hoping that at the end of the week, they do something cool. Like, dude, a trailer for Final Fantasy VII would be great. I it like how we're like, seems, release yeah. dates, and then we did two, and then we were like, number three is probably never coming out. <laughs> I don't yeah, think right. it's never coming I think, out. I think we're going to see the, the one-two punch at E3, where they show us a lot of new stuff. And then they tell us that episode one will be out for Christmas or something like that. Oh, yeah. Christ mass. Um, also, <laughs> also, I just want to say that I know man. that Captain Bosch is not a prince. Don't get on my case in the comments. Thanks. Uh, it's fine. All right. So uh, while we're on the subject of uh, whimsical ass weeaboo crap, uh, Nino Cooney <laughs> 2. Uh, you got to check out Nino Cooney 2 because you're right. gadding about all over the which way. Yeah, I'm going all over the place. I'm seeing all the games. So uh, tell me, did they bring back that little Totoro with the bat wings and the small pants or is this going to be, be a bad game? 
<laughs> no, uh, no uh, Totoro Jr. is not around. Uh, Mr. Drippy is nowhere to be found. Uh, sucks. I love the first Nino Kuni. Right. I think it's such a cool game. This one looks like it's going to carry on that lineage and be also very cool. You uh, had to go that large gremlin and have it give birth so you shoot out in the air. <laughs> But, I don't think there's any of that either, but all right. I do remember that part. You I know what you're like talking about. a whole birth canal in that game. It's yeah, weird. there's like a room with a bunch of children in there. It's weird. Ooh, it's very strange. Big monster baby what? tunnel. Um, <laughs> I played that entire game. I don't remember what was happening. Uh, yeah, the game takes place 100 years after the first Nino Kuni. Um, Is everyone dead? N it's just yeah, it's, it's 100 years, 100 years later. The so last probably. Totoro with bat wings in, in, uh, in captivity. The didn't galaxy necessarily is peace. See, I didn't necessarily see characters from the first game, but there are a lot of references to the first game. Like uh, the main character, Evan, is the uh, prince of Ding Dong Dell, which is a... That's right. Mm. Ding Dong Dell. Uh, <laughs> it was a good game. Which is a... Uh, you by Hostess. <laughs> a city that you visit in the first game. It's a city like... I don't, did you guys play this in? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, it's a city where, with the uh, big fat cat king. Guy's Remember, great. yeah, yep. um, and Evan himself has like cat ears, so I think people are assuming he's you know half cat, half man, like old, a cat man. Old oh. Beyond listeners uh, who've been around the way will remember that uh, we used to have a guy here named Colin Campbell who went who when he first heard about uh, Nino Cooney called it Ninu Nana. Ninu Nana is what Greg and Colin called it on the show for a very long time. <laughs> Boy, so I'm very excited for Ninu Nana too. Uh, Return of the Nana. Yeah. You know, Kuni, uh, when, it, when it first was announced, I remember just being like, well, they're going to totally think of a better name for this when they release it stateside, and then they did not. Did not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The old Wrath of the White Witch. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're shaking things up this time around. Um, they've completely overhauled the combat system. Uh, controls it looks to me like a more of a more traditional RPG in the fact that you you have a party of three. Uh, your comrades operate uh, on a series of commands. Like they, they, you program like what you want them to do, how you want them to behave in battle. But you can switch to any of them on the fly. Okay, um, but you're not you're time. not controlling familiars this time. No, around. so there's no familiars. Instead, there's these things called higgledies. Oh, go on, higgledies, which are these little higgledy dee dee. Yeah. What do we have here? They look like the woodland spirits from Princess Mononoke. Okay. Um, ah, Kodama. Yeah, but they, they have different uh, elemental powers, like there's wind, fire, ice, higgledies. Uh, Art. And they're all, yeah. And you put them all together with their powers combined. Um, but you you use them in battle. Uh, you can command them with a, like a separate sub-menu, uh, so you can do things like Detra uh, distract enemies like in the demo that we saw uh, the boss that you fight at the end you can command the Higgledies to sneak around behind him and jump on his back and when he's trying to get him off you can rush in for attacks like team attacks yeah um, or you can also use them uh, in the world map itself like in the dungeons themselves like one of the instances that I saw was uh, there's little basically like wind tunnels in the throughout the dungeon that if you have a wind Higgledy he can summon a tornado that'll boost you up to the second level. Nice. So it helps you solve these sort of environmental puzzles and stuff nice. like that. Yeah. yeah, and that's uh, later this year, 2017. Yeah, also coming to PC. which I was really surprised that, that we were going to see it at the end of the year. I thought for sure we wouldn't see that till spring yeah. 2018. I also like this recurring uh, new segment of whoever's in the fourth chair has an entire segment that just leaves Brian speechless. Yeah. <laughs> Last week was Jonathan and King Noir. This week was Zach and the Higgledies. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you got this thing here, uh, you said overworld diorama, photorealistic backdrops. Yeah. What? So it's, it's really amazing. Like the, you know, the last game was developed in, in, uh, conjunction with, uh, uh, Studio Ghibli. Higgledy Ghibli. Yeah. But this time around they've brought some former Ghibli employees just into the fold that just work there full time. They've kind of redesigned the, the look and feel of the game sort of top down. Like it's still that cell shaded animated look, but when you're out on the world map, uh, everything looks almost realistic, like texture wise. And then you're controlling these little chibi characters that are running around and you would think that that doesn't work, but it actually looks amazing. Like it looks really super cool. This, this looks like a bunch of Nick weird, running around on Google maps. Uh, all, well, not necessarily Google Maps. Like it doesn't look like that realistic, but Alta it does Vista look. Maps? Yes, there's Map like a ton of. Maps. <laughs> there's a ton of like really cool textures on mountains, and like the trees look really great, but it still retains like an animated look. And then when you go into different areas like dungeons or towns, then you switch to like a more traditional view. Okay. Yeah. Higgledy diggledy. Yep. Um, bu 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 My man, Timothy Ralph Weisenhunt asks, F word, I just want Ninu Kunu too. <laughs> Any chance on a remaster of the first one? So, I bet so. I've been talking about this since they revealed it at PSX. Like, uh, Nino Kuni, the first one, was a success, but I still know a ton of people that didn't play it on PlayStation 3 or missed it because they just weren't playing games then. And, uh, 
I would I would think that it would be such a smart move if mm-hmm. they would yeah. either do a remaster or even just a straight port in the months leading up to you know, Kuni 2. I'd love to we'll see, see like a fractured but whole Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe we'll scenario, see it on stage, you know? at Sony Stage at E3, and they'll announce that. Yeah, yeah. They, um, they, they did the same pre-order thing now and you get a download of the yeah, first yeah, game. Yeah. yeah, that's how Bayonetta handled it. Yeah, you also don't have like to, like, they don't have to do a lot because that game still looks gorgeous. Yeah. Yep. That game yep. is beautiful. I mean, yep. it's it's it stands the test of time in the way that the Wind Waker does where that it will always look that good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I believe it was on PS Now, which I just canceled my subscription to because I wasn't using. Oh, PS Then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so we've got uh, time for rapid fire. Rapid fire is, of course, the part of the show where you answer. We've got a questions. There are a bunch of them in there, and this is from uh, the Let's Facebook. Where do we get you those? Go groups. dot com. Go to head, over to, head over to groups. dot net <laughs> slash the podcast group of <laughs> us. This one. Now go to facebook. dot com slash groups slash podcast beyond, and you can make some friends on there or get in an argument. It's up to you. Just don't be mean. Uh, Jamie Harvison says, it's been a bit quiet on the fractured but whole front. Don't say that. Do you think it's going to be a summer game now? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think it's not going to be Q1 because uh, we have For Honor, uh, For Honor's coming on Valentine's Day and then Wildlands is coming at the beginning of March. There's no reason for Ubisoft to have a third game. I think this might be May. July. Yeah, I mean, on yeah. the flip side, Ubisoft has occasionally just shipped a bunch of their games within a week of each other. So <laughs> I mean, this would be knows? an awesome July game. Yeah, like, totally. Totally I, something for kids to play over summer. Yeah. Yeah. Children yeah. should not play this yeah, game. Yeah, they can. They're cartoons. Children love a good fractured butthole. <laughs> oh, God. Dylan West It's their said, game name. I didn't name the game. Don't blame me. Goodbye. Good night. Dylan West said, do you think the video game business will ever crash again? Nah. No. Mm, no, but we're way, doing, our, we're doing our best. Is, I, I mean, the film industry will ever crash. The Earth will. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I, yeah. I think at this point, well, who knows? I'm worried a great deal about moon explosions. They tend to be a big problem. No Meteorites? video games in the uh, in a po- post-apocalyptic hell. Pocahontas world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Boris Avazov says, "Do they have pizza in Cali?" Spoken like a true New Yorker. We can all take a short nap while Brian foams at the mouth over this one. Uh, they they ready, do. Go. They do have good pizza here. You just have to look for it. Don't try to get big floppy New York style slices. Try to get the sort of more Italian margarita style, like traditional thin. Called uh, boopity boppity pies. Boopity boppity. Just get racist on the Italians on yeah. the show. And that big right white there. thing in the center, Speaking that's not an egg, it's not ice cream, that's some kind of cheese. No, maybe it's oh, you Mazzana with Rana. your signature outfit you wear when you race to your Italian friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Get dumped on. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yes, the pizza's very good here. Come to me, I have a nice sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. Brian got mad at us for being racist against Italians before the show. And then I proceeded to be racist against my own Italian family. Um, Anyway, uh, Kinsley Samuel K says, hey, not really a question, but can I have a beyond for my upcoming exams? No. No. You should study. Yep. I agree. Beyond Beyond for you. I don't care what they say. Stay in school, but beyond your way out. B plus yond. What? That's a good grade. B plus is fine. A yond. Anyway, uh, Yair Donan said, cool baby boy name is my wife and I want to be prepared. And we already have a girl named Pickett? What? No, a girl named Pickett, you idiot. (laughs) (laughs) This is my daughter, Pickett. Pickett Warwick. Okay, (laughs) there's times when I say stupid stuff and you call me an idiot, and there's that. Yeah, that was bad (laughs) news. That was dumb. I don't know. I thought it was like a name like Huckle or something. I mean, name your daughter Pickett. I don't think. Why would you need our help if her if her name's Pickett? It sounds perfectly fine. I've been thinking about this question since uh, (laughs) since I read it earlier of about 60 minutes ago, and I think a good baby boy name for years kid would be Johnston. Johnston? Johnston? Yeah. Johnston uh, checks in? Yeah, just like a just like Justin, but with an edge. What about Put just an like extra Johnston? N in there for fun. Okay, that's really good. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I mean, like, how can you top Pickett? <laughs> 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 My daughter Pickett. <laughs> Shut up. He's having a boy. Yeah. Um, uh, all right, that was pretty bad. <laughs> uh, well, they already have a girl's name, Pickett, so... Yeah. yeah, I think they're good. <laughs> Name your son Pickett as well. <laughs> Rickett. Um, Pickett right. the World Watcher. Damn it. All right, Jeff Squirtle France says... What the fuck? <laughs> It's a squirrel. Squirrel France. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, Look, I if think we're, that's if a we're, fake name. If we're butchering a French name, like Squirtle. Jeff Squirtle okay. France says, how do I uh, stop getting wise. bullied? <laughs> <laughs> Who would be your video game drinking buddy? Oh, man. Uh, my drinking buddy would be Max Payne, because I would never feel like I had an alcohol problem <laughs> drinking oh, yeah. with Max Payne. That's true. I, do, I love uh, it. They were, Vincent from Catherine. 
<laughs> yeah. Guess. And he has sex with the devil star. Probably Crash Bandicoot. I'd love to see that dude get top three to- <laughs> like toilet don't, trash. Hey, uh, spoilers, don't drink with people who wear shorts. Yeah. Yeah, 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 don't do that. I feel like he just he just come like <laughs> scuttling in through like a crawl space or a small hole in the wall with just a bunch of like fermented uh what are they called? Those fruits? Mangoes. <laughs> nope. Mangoes. Did you imagine like you're you leaving apples? It's like, no, they're no, they're not apples. We talked about this. They're called like wubba fruits or something. Yeah, don't worry about it. Oh, anyway. jungle fruits. Uh, Whatever. Could you imagine like getting kicked out of a bar at three a.m. and the uh, the bartender's like, "Get that orange wolf out of here!" And you're like, <laughs> He's a bandicoot. <laughs> uh man. What the the man from Tapper who's just very calm and throws his glasses across yeah. the bar. I, yeah, he, that'd be a good bar. Uh, I'd drink with Sully. Titular hero Tapper. Su- dude, Sully, Sully would be, be good. rad to drink yeah. with. Sully would Plus be awesome because he'd, he'd just tell cigars. you like, messed up stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd, be, they'd be lies, but it doesn't matter because yeah. who cares? You're drinking in a video game, you idiot. What do you expect? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh, Geralt. Geralt would be, be well, Geralt's, yeah, but Geralt's Geralt, awesome. Geralt can't get drunk. Hell yeah, he can. Why not? Him and Dandelion get F-faced. They get a whole Blood and wine. of vodka. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yep. Blood and wine, other fluids and rum, all kinds <laughs> of stuff going on in there. There's I, literally a mission in The Witcher 2 where you wake up hungover half naked and you have to go find your pants. Yeah. Pretty I would good. like to get drunk with Picket, Princess of the Chosen. <laughs> all right. That's it. We're ending the show. The show's over. We can't do it anymore because Brian keeps making fun of me. We're talking wrong. Sorry. It's only my job to talk. I can't believe I did it wrong. I feel bad about myself. <laughs> anyway, we talk wrong all the time. Uh, you can find us all on Twitter. Marty's McBiggity with two G's and two T's. I am Max Scoville. Brian is Agent Bizzle and Zach is Zacharias D. Uh, go check out. Uh, what do you got? You got a preview up for all these things? Uh, there is about? a there is a twelve minute commentary uh, up for Horizon. There's a four K graphics comparison. There's a combat montage. There's a bunch of stuff rolling out this cool. week. From you got some gateway. Do we have footage of Nino Kuni floating around? Uh, is that too much of a secret? I don't think so. No? I don't know that okay. we do. Yeah, I can double check. All right. And if I do, I'll let you know. Remember, basketball season is just around the corner, so make sure you get your NBA draft pickets in. I want to push you down a flight of Uh, stairs. Also, you should be excited for next week's episode. Yes, we're going to have special special guests from across oceans. I know who it is. Yeah, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Oh yeah, oceans. Oh. The Ocean's Eleven. Johnston Donan yep. joining next week. Johnston Donan. <laughs> anyway, this is a dumb show. We have fun doing it. Uh, so hop in that, uh, hop in that, that Facebook group and, and make some friends. And um, you know, check us out on uh, on YouTube. It's youtubecom slash beyond and we have uh, special videos up there, uh, such as uh, a forty-five minute video of Marty picking crumbs out of his beard. So check that one oh, out. Oh, picking crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of the show, everybody. Yeah, beyond. beyond. <laughs>